Why do crab cakes get all the glory? What about fish cakes? I love fish cakes, and I don't see any reason why crab cakes can be served in fancy restaurants for $30 an entry, while fish cakes are always reduced to, I don't know, a way of dealing with fish leftovers. So today, I hope to introduce you to the fish cakes worthy of a special occasion. It all depends on the fish you make them from. I learned this one summer when a few students didn't show up to a fish grilling class and we ended up with too much fish. I mean, how else would I end up with striped bass and bronzino leftovers? Good fish is so expensive that I usually buy exactly the amount I plan to use. The wonderful thing about having more fish per student than I planned was that the students who did show up got more grilling practice. But no matter how good that fish was, there was only so much we could eat in one sitting. So here I was with leftover striper. And I did what I always do with fish leftovers. I turned it into fish cakes. But these fish cakes weren't just a nice casual meal. They were amazing. They reminded me of crab cakes because of their texture. In fact, they were so good. I sometimes buy and cook extra striper on purpose just to make them. Of course, the same exact recipe works with absolutely any fish leftovers that are not too firm. In other words, avoid swordfish, tuna, and monkfish. I have a few little rules about fish cakes. You have to make them before you refrigerate the fish leftovers. If you put your fish leftovers in the fridge, they firm up, the juices turn into jello, and it's really hard to integrate them with other ingredients. After the fish cakes are made, they have to sit in the fridge overnight for at least six hours to set completely. Otherwise, they'll fall apart in the pan when you fry them. Okay, so I have about a pound of cooked striped bass and red snapper here. And as I mentioned before, any fish that is not completely firm will work. The fish can be cooked any which way you want. If you're not sure how to cook striped bass, here's a video that will help. Discard the skin and bones and place the fish in a bowl. Add 25 grams of minced red onions, shallots, or scallions. Yellow onions are more aggressive, so if you want to use them, you'd have to cook them in a bit of olive oil or butter first. I like to add some chopped herbs. Today I'm using cilantro and chives, but you can also use dill and tarragon. Basically any herb of your choice. The amount is completely up to you. This is not a baking recipe. Normally I don't measure anything for something like this, but I weighed most of these ingredients just for you. <laughs> I forgot to weigh cilantro and chives because seriously, who weighs herbs? Okay, let's dump in all the chopped stuff and move onto the binders. We'll need about a third of a cup of mayo, about two tablespoons of labne or sour cream or creme fraiche, just something milky and creamy, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, about a quarter cup of panko breadcrumbs, and freshly ground black pepper. To give my cakes a smoky taste, I like to add some Spanish smoked paprika. For aroma, I grate in a little bit of lemon or lime zest. Half a lime is plenty here. And some juice of whatever citrus you're using. I'll go with half a lime and then taste and digest. You want to mix thoroughly, but leave some fish in biggish chunks. I think the texture is a lot better when it's not completely homogeneous. Don't forget to taste and adjust for salt and acidity. Mine needed a bit of more salt. Grab a cookie sheet and line it with plastic wrap, foil, or parchment paper. Mine is 13 by 9 inches, but any flat surface that can hold the cakes in one layer will work. You can even use a cutting board. I'm using a cookie cutter to shape my cakes, but you can certainly just take handfuls of the fish mixture and pat it into cakes using your hands. Make sure you pack the mixture tightly into the cookie cutter so that the fish cakes don't fall apart. My cookie cutter is two and three quarters inches in diameter, but anything less than three inches will work. One pound of fish will produce six appetizer portions or three entrees. 
I like to go over all the top edges to make them a bit more beveled. This ensures that my fish cakes will make good contact with the skillet when the time comes to fry them. Cover the fish cakes with plastic and put in the fridge overnight or up to two days. When you're ready to serve the cakes, pour some panko breadcrumbs onto a plate and coat the cakes on both sides, pressing firmly to help the breadcrumbs stick. And when I call for panko breadcrumbs, I mean it. They produce way better crunch than any other breadcrumbs. You can make any changes to this recipe you want, but please don't mess with panko breadcrumbs. <laughs> I like to serve my cakes with smoky mayo. I don't know a sandwich that wouldn't be better with smoky mayo. So even if you don't make the fish cakes, I hope this mayo is still useful. Take a third of a cup of your favorite mayo, I'm using Hellman's, add a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, one small garlic clove grated on a microplane zester, you only need like a quarter of a teaspoon, a dash of Spanish smoked paprika, black pepper, and you can also add cayenne if you want it spicy, and a squirt of lime or lemon for acidity. Mix it all up and adjust salt to taste. Mine needed a little pinch. Let's try it again. Good. If I'm serving the fish cakes on buns, I like to toast the buns before I cook the cakes. This way, I can place the cake straight onto the buns. Let's melt a bit of butter in a pan of medium heat to toast our brioche bun. If you're ever wondering what a brioche bun is missing, it's more butter. <laughs> in fact, if there is ever a void in your life that no amount of therapy can fill, trust me, it can be filled with butter. Beautiful. Okay, now let's wipe out the pan and add a bit of canola or some other neutral oil about two teaspoons per fish cake. Place the cakes in the pan and cook for a couple of minutes until the bottom is nice and crisp. You want this to take a couple of minutes so that the inside warms through too. So regulate your heat appropriately. Flip the cake and brown on the other side for a couple of minutes. That looks good. Let's get it out. Sauce the bun with that addictive smoky mayo. Top with the fish cake and some cute green thingies. You can just use lettuce, but I'm using pea shoots because I lucked out and found some in the store. Move over, crab cakes. Here come the cakes, made from striped bass. And if I were Chef John, I'd say they kick ass. Another great way to serve fish cakes is to turn them into eggs benedict. Their texture makes a perfect bed for a poached egg and hollandaise sauce. No bun, just fish cake, egg, and sauce. And maybe like a little bit of asparagus on the side. And that, my friends, is a killer brunch. For more fish recipes, don't forget to subscribe to Helen's Kitchen channel and hit that little bell button for notifications. And if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.